Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video we are doing the second installment in our immunity series and we are going to be discussing B lymphocytes and their um, functions and their responsibility in the active response to infections. In our previous video we covered T lymphocytes which I'm just going to link at the top right now if you need to go and watch that first. I suggest you watch that one first um, because I'm going to reference those cells as well. But today what we're going to do is we are going to look at B lymphocytes and their response to specific um, antigens and pathogens that affect the body. Now if you are new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post videos on Tuesdays or Thursdays. Now what I want to do is just quickly run through some key facts about uh, B lymphocytes. So B lymphocytes are also found floating through your blood and your lymph nodes, but they're um, more specific in their function because they produce something called antibodies. Now I'm going to come back to these later on and explain them in more detail, but essentially B lymphocytes are more responsible for specific responses. In other words, they respond to specific infections. Another really important aspect about B lymphocytes is they focus more of their attention on bacteria and also anything that's actually floating in the blood. Um, and that's why it's important to remember that they're in the blood itself. Um, they are unable, however, to determine if a cell is sick. And you'll remember that's where T lymphocytes come in. They are the ones that, generally speaking, kill a virus infection, whereas B lymphocytes do put more of their attention on bacteria. However, if a virus is floating around in the blood, then a B um, lymphocyte is also able to deal with that virus, but it deals with it in a very different way. So let's have a look at how we actually respond and how these B lymphocytes start their journey is actually with the T lymphocytes. Now I want to remind you that is why you needed to have watched the T lymphocyte video first. So what we have in front of us over here is a bacterial cell with an antigen on it. And an antigen is this little thing over here. It is a protein which tells us that it's a bacteria and therefore a foreigner. Now it's attached to another white blood cell at this stage, but what's important in this picture is because it's now fused with this white blood cell, it has attracted the attention of this helper T. A helper T, you will remember, is the T lymphocyte site that initiates the immune response. In other words, this is where we start our immune response when it comes to specific reactions. In other words, a very specific bacteria has infected us. Let's say it's tuberculosis. Now the body is going to specifically respond to it. So the helper T starts and it alerts the body that there is an infection. And it can do this in a multitude of ways. But one of them is releasing like a chemical that is going to attract and alert the other cells in the immune system, namely our B lymphocyte. So here is our B lymphocyte. Now our B lymphocyte is attracted to these foreign particles, the pathogens, the bacteria. And you'll notice on this picture here, again, we have the antigens on the outside of the bacteria, except this time it has attached itself to the B lymphocyte cell. And what happens is the B lymphocyte uses this as a, a marker or an indicator that there's a foreign object inside the body that needs to be destroyed. And with this information, they fit like a lock and a key, which means that each one of these receptors on the outside of a B lymphocyte matches the antigen that fits inside there. Now you're probably thinking, does that mean I have a B lymphocyte for every single bacteria? Well, you would if you've been exposed to that bacteria before, yes. You also have the body being able to produce those antigens on the outside of the cell at random because of your genetics and what you've inherited from your parents. So you do actually have a whole library of infections that you might not have had just yet, but you're ready for them. Now, when the bacteria locks into that little receptor, what happens is two things. 
First, our B cells are going to produce more of themselves, but this time they're going to make a specialized kind of B cell, which we call a plasma cell. Now, plasma cells are responsible for producing these antibodies that you can see here. Antibodies, again, are like a lock and a key. Each antibody will match up with an antigen on a bacteria. Now, if you're not so sure about how that works, don't worry, I will be explaining that in more detail in the next part of this video. The second thing that the B cells divide into or become is going to be what we call a memory cell. Now, a memory cell, as the name suggests, is a memory of the antigen on the outside of the bacteria. Now, I know we get these words confused with each other, antigen and antibody, but I'm going to clarify that now with you so you can see how antibodies are made and then how we actually remember those for future infections. So let's now take some time to clarify antibodies and antigens. So first things first, let's talk about antigens. Antigens are these uniquely structured proteins on the outside of any cell. So if this is a cell, let's say it's a bacterial cell, it's got its little flagella, sitting on the outside will be antigens and they will be a specific shape that is associated with that bacteria. Now, all cells have this. Viruses, protists, even your own cells have their own antigens. That's how your body knows that something belongs to it or doesn't belong to it with an antigen. They're like little markers on the outside of your cells. Now, when a foreign object uh, like a pathogen, a microorganism, a bacteria is inside of you, your body is going to look out for these little antigens on the outside. And when it picks up that there is a foreign cell inside of you, the response, as we've just mentioned, is going to be that those B lymphocytes are going to produce plasma cells, and those plasma cells are going to produce antibodies. Now let me elaborate more on what an antibody looks like. If you have a look on the left-hand side here, you'll notice it has this Y shape to it. And that is essentially to assist with um, sticking the particles together. It helps with um, having two sensory points at the end for our antigens to lock into. And essentially what I'm saying, to make it nice and simple, is that you can see on the end over here of our antibody, there's an open space. That is where our antigen will lock in. So what happens is you have the antigen of the bacteria, a very specific shape, and you've now made like an impression of it, right? Like a, like a, a memory or a mold of it. Now that you've kept that mold of the antigen, you know what shape the antigen is, you are going to build the antibody around that. And so every single time you're infected by this pathogen, this bacteria or virus, you will make the antibody that matches it with that unique shape of its antigen. And so essentially how antibodies do their job is kind of as follows. They do a couple of things, right? The first thing they do is they are going to cause bacteria to burst. How they do that is they are going to get stuck on the outside of the bacterial cell, so let's say here's our bacterial cell, and the antibodies are going to attach themselves to the surface of our bacterial cell. And first of all, they attach, because remember they have those little indentations where the antigens connect, and it causes a deterioration or a breakdown of the bacteria's cell wall and cell membrane, and basically what happens is they end up breaking open and, well, leaking out. And so what happens is they lose all of their DNA, that comes out of the cell, and it dies. The second way antibodies assist in your immune system is they make it easier. Let me just move this over, but there we go. They make it easier for phagocytes to ingest them. Yet again, if we look back at my picture I just drew now, remember we've got all of our antibodies stuck on the outside. And that makes it easier for phagocytes to ingest because phagocytes are basically blind. They can't 
tell the difference by looking for a foreign invader. They have to feel, they have to touch for a foreign invader. So what they end up doing is touching those little antibodies on the outside and realizing, oh, you don't belong here. I must ingest you and destroy you. The next way antibodies assist with your immunity is going to be clumping organisms and microorganisms together. And how that works is if I just draw another bacterial cell over here next to this one, and I add in a few antibodies on the outside of this one, you will see that if I get them close enough to one another, the antibodies can connect with each other and cause them to clump together. And that's what you want, because what you want to do is you want them to stick in big clumps so that phagocytes can come, and instead of engulfing one at a time, they can engulf hundreds at a time. Just remember, phagocytes are really big white blood cells, so they are able to ingest hundreds of viral or bacterial particles at a time. The final thing that antibodies are able to do, which is one we always forget, is they neutralize bacterial toxins. A lot of people don't know this, but bacteria are able to produce toxins. And um, these toxins basically poison you. And one of the most famous ones would be linked to something like tetanus. Um, it's a bacteria that creates a toxin. And essentially, the toxin causes you to have extreme muscle spasms. Um, which is incredibly painful. And what you need is you need your immune system to destroy that substance. Now remember, these toxins are often proteins. And so these proteins will have antigens on the outside, and that then allows the antibodies to clump all of those proteins together that are in your bloodstream so that your white blood cells can engulf them and destroy them. Now, one last note about antibodies is the fact that you can get an antibody serum, which basically means that if you don't have a lot of time to develop antibodies, which is an important part of this whole process, antibodies are not made in one day. They take time to create the immunity. And I'm going to speak about that shortly when we talk about memory cells. You need time to develop these antibodies. But once you have them, you can keep them. Now, if you've never been exposed to something like tetanus, as I said earlier, you can get what we call an antibody serum. The serum contains just the antibodies, nothing else, and it's an instant fix. So it will instantly help you. You don't have to wait for your immune system to respond. And we use these serums as a form of immunity, especially when it's quite severe, the infection or the toxin, and you need to respond immediately. Now, what I want to do is speak about this whole process in one big overview, right from the top. And then I want to just round off by talking about what's happening with these memory cells, because we haven't spoken about them very much just yet. So just as a recap, what happens in the beginning of your immune system is that your T cells are going to be able to pick up that there are foreign invaders. Those foreign invaders, these individuals over here, are marked as foreign invaders because they have antigens on the outside of them. Remember, those are the little proteins that flag them on the outside of their cells. So the T lymphocyte alerts the entire body, and it uses helper Ts to do that. So helper Ts ring the alarm. Now, this is what happens. The moment I ring the alarm, two things happen. One, I can use killer T's to go after a viral infection. That is if we have an infection inside the cell itself, like your cells are infected. But if you have an infection outside your cells, in other words, mostly protists and bacterial infections, also viruses as well, as long as the virus is still outside of your cells, because remember, if you understand how viruses reproduce, you'll know that they go inside and hide inside your cells. What we need to now notice is that the helper T's call over the B lymphocytes. Mam said just now that the memory cells are produced and antibodies are produced. And those antibodies are made by plasma cells, which in this diagram we're just calling effector B cells, but they're called plasma cells. Now those antibodies, right? As you can see in the picture, they have got the, um, 
bacterial cell over there, the foreign invader with the antigen at the end, and now we've got the antibody that matches it. And you can see they lock into one another, they fit nicely. Now what we need to do is we need to remember this infection for future. And that is where memory cells come. Memory cells are long-term cells. These are cells that we will make after sometimes a week to even a month after we have been infected. And what we are remembering is what that antigen looked like. So essentially, if you want to imagine it, if I zoom in on a memory cell and we look inside, we are going to keep a memory of whatever the shape the antigen was. So if this is our antibody, we are going to remember that it had a certain shape at the end. And we're going to remember that shape. Now, we don't need a huge amount of these memory cells because we technically only need a few copies of them to remember that antigen. So the next time you are infected, you already have the antibody map or you already have the antibody recipe. So you don't have to wait five, seven, sometimes two weeks for your body to make the antibodies. Instead, what you can do is you can jump the step of making the plasma cells and then making the antibodies and you can go straight to making the antibodies first. This means that the response is faster the second time you're infected and hopefully you can see how this all fits into having vaccinations. The first time you have a vaccine your body takes longer to respond to it but it creates a memory of the infection so that if you ever are infected by something your body will respond faster and you'll receive either no symptoms or really really, really simple symptoms like maybe a runny nose and a light fever. Now, as always, I like to finish up these lessons with a terminology recap, and you can use these for any of your flashcards as you study. But in the beginning of the lesson, we spoke about the third and final grouping of lymphocytes, which are going to be B lymphocytes. These are the lymphocytes that are called upon by the T lymphocytes. Remember, T are the ones that sound the alarm. B are the ones that are going to respond for specific infections. Now the B lymphocytes go through a special kind of cell division and they produce plasma cells. Plasma cells are cells that are specialized in producing something called antibodies. Antibodies are these super proteins that have a copy of the antigen on the outside from the bacteria, keeping in mind that remember that antigen is a special shaped protein. And those antigens indicate whether or not that bacteria or that cell belongs there. And so the antibody, like a lock and a key, matches with the antigen. So they lock into one another. And that's how we know that they match. Now, once we've made these antibodies, we don't want to have to keep making a new copy of the um, shape of the antigen over and over again every time. So what we also produce is memory cells. These memory cells are going to remember what the antigen looked like. Was it a circle? Was it a square? Was it like a star shape? So the next time that we are infected, we can respond faster. Now, this kind of immunity is what we call active immunity. Active immunity is when the body actively responds and produces its own antibodies and produces its own response. This is different to passive immunity. Passive immunity is when you are given those antibodies, either via injection or something like breast milk, which already contains the antibodies that have been made before. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.